Well, I'm going to investigate one of these photo cells. I found one in the skiff. These are these smart cells, or they can be remotely controlled by the council somehow. So, this is one of these other quite a new street light. Got one of these uh, fancy photo cells, and uh, these appear to have an extra contact in them instead of the standard generic photo cell, which is just a uh, Zodian uh, capsule which goes in here and uh, controls the light as such. So I'll zoom in a bit, that's a standard Zodium. And here we got the other photo cell. Uh, I'll see if we can get the letters in there. It uh, LCU NEMA. Labels are faded. Um, I'm just going to open it up and just curious what's in this device itself. Uh, by just going back to the adapter where the photo cell fits in the street lamp itself. You have the three middle contacts that have been active and uh, switched output in a neutral. And then there's actually four spare contacts. In this case there's only two used, but there uh, appears to be an option there. You can even use four of these uh, contacts. And um, I think, not 100% sure these uh, have something to do with dimming. We've got these two extra contacts here, and I don't think there's spare contacts on the other side. I'm going to open the device up and uh, see what's in there, actually. Uh, this particular street lights, I'm not even sure if it works. Um, there's not much in it, really. It's uh, all condensated in a uh, white box. It's quite nicely uh, packed in there. Uh, I haven't even plugged it in yet, so I don't even know if this bloody thing works. I can give it a shot. I think it's a DOA. Um, I'll give you the name label. Turn this thing around. Uh, these photo cells are used in all types of different street lights, so uh, yeah. I'll get a reading of this. It looks like an. Uh, Trans LED ER, something like that. 222 40 volts, 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, 0 0.11 amperes, made in China. That was worries me when you see that. Probably made at a cost, 23 watts. I can't see a year on it, but um, I guess it's only one or two years old. Well, what the heck, let's give the damn thing a smoke test and see if it works. Uh, we'll just plug it in and uh, see what happens. Okay, energization of the device happens shortly. And it works! It's on the photo cell so it will switch off, it doesn't smoke. Let's have a quick look before the lights are off. That's good. Oh, there we go, the photo cell. Just switched off. I have covered the photo cell. It's one of some surprise that it works. We'll try again. And it works. That surprised me. I thought this lamp was stuffed. I normally go for the L22s so or the L29s. Oh, the photo cell is still too light. Um, I need to cover it up harder. I'll check the other fancy photo cell, see what it does. Okay. Fancy photo cell is plugged in, see what happens. And it does respond as well. Like that, come on quickly. So it switches off. So we're going to analyze that cell, we're going to take it apart and uh, see what it does. So that was a bin find. Uh, you can get the chips, uh, the zoom in hard so you can see the chips a bit better. There we go, de energized capsule. And we're going to have a look inside. As I often say, always de-energize the device and uh, unplug, that's quite important. Whatever you do with your experiment with electricity, unplug safety first. This is your best gap, you cannot uh, beat it, a switch can get stuck, you can't always trust the switch. Okay, I've got already three screws loose. thing up and see what's inside. Just curious. Yep, 
Maybe. Ooh, interesting. I'm not sure the camera pictures up nice. We're gonna have a closer analysis. Okay. Quite a bit more stuff in the device than I actually was thinking. Um, that should look like a set of capacitors. It's got a bit of electronics in here. We've got a surge diverter here. A uh, little relay by the look of it, or the blue box. I'm not sure what that is. I need a closer look on that. Microprocessor, so I think we're making things unnecessarily complicated for a bloody street light. No need to have all this crap in a street light, but so we seem to be doing a lot of things. A few unpopulated uh, pads in here. Oh, yeah, there's more. Jesus, a lot of stuff in here. Let's see if we get it the other way around, see what uh, the name on that thing is, that is uh, Tech Power. So that's all sits on the other side of the contacts here, so you got these two extra test fingers here and there for the contacts. And that controls all this junk inside the device. I'm not sure you can decipher the exact details on this nameplate, but it's... Uh, I bet it's uh, a lot more expensive than your, say, $15 photo cell, like the standard Zodian we have here. Um, it's just a lot simpler. Well made, I must say. Don't. Uh, 3.4 volts, uh, 3 microfarads, PF, UF, something like that. 3.4. It's interesting. So it's a tandem capacitor. They have been. Paralleled up in an oval capsule, it's quite interesting. cool. Yeah, to show you in comparison with the standard sodium, which is just in uh, there for different lux ratings. You have the SS635 lux, just got a little relay switch in there. And a, oh, that's a capacitor, and then um, that's the actual photocell component. And there must be an SCR or a triac or something in there. Yeah, that's this device, that's the actual switching element that sits on a heatsink. Yeah. And that's the sodium that has just this uh, three contacts that you're active in load wire and um, your neutral on the other side here. So, yeah. Puzzles me a, a little bit since we have make things so overly complicated. And yeah, it's well made. And that is the device. This is just a fancy photo cell. Don't know what this thing does here. Seems to be quite floppy. Cool. Thanks for watching. Just before I close this video off. I had a good look at it again. This uh, disc appears to be like an aerial. I've got a little mirror aluminium foil and it goes to this particular wire. And I guess it's a type of uh, communication aerial. It goes into a uh, port here. Let's get some more detail on this thing. And it disappears into the system. There's a tuned call here somehow. And yeah. So that is probably used uh, for maybe adjusting the intensity on the street light or something like that. I just follow up a little bit more on the video. When uh, I checked the video data, I noticed uh, there's a green indicator light that came on. There's a, a search diverter that got an uh, indicator light on it. This is quite cool. And then. We get into this box, so wait till the light switches itself up. I taken the screws out and it was quite surprised. It's a surprise. A big box, a smaller box in there. And that reveals the following.
inside the box it got a uh, triadonic digital controller which can dim the LED light between more or less 1 and 100%. It's quite cool. And yeah, that's quite a well made box. Aluminum or aluminium, what we call it here in New Zealand. So, yeah. And the lamp is true to its power usage, uh, 23 watts it says, look at 22.1 watts, so um, yeah, seem to be happy with that part, so that's pretty good. So yeah, that's why I, I may as well put it in as the extra part in the video. Um, this is still quite cool, there's quite a nice uh, search diverter. I want to salvage a few of those in the skip and I'll see them arrive, they're quite nice compact units, 10 ampere. So yeah, there we go. Uh, the idle current with the device switched off is about 0 0.6 watts. Not too bad.